to talk a little bit about star trails tonight so if you guys are interested in about i'm assuming that's why you're all here you want to find out a little bit more about that or you're curious about that now i know some of you are old hats at this by all means you're more than welcome to if somebody uh, ask a question in the chat room you're more than welcome to do that uh you can if somebody knows the answer please by all means answer the question for them now, there's no ceremony here just because I, I don't know everything. So, it's, uh, you know, so you're just going to have to bear with me as I go through some of the stuff. Uh, the night's topics tonight are going to be about the, uh, of course, the basic about the uh, star trails, some of the apps and online resources that I find useful for me and some of the other members. Uh, star trail software, I'll talk about uh, a few of the ones out there, mainly the three that are most commonly used. Uh, we're going to talk about some upcoming uh, events. And of course, we're going to do the online photo review. And of course, I'm going to talk about some basic editing tips. Nothing fancy, no deep dive into anything about this button does this, this button does that. But basically kind of like the, the, the workflow of how I kind of edit and put things together. Any questions so far about any of that stuff? Seems pretty straightforward, right? So the next session, the next part's going to take another four or five hours. So just sit back and enjoy a tale. So just kidding. For those who don't know, Star Trail is a type of photograph that uses long exposure times to capture diurnal uh, circles uh, that apparent the apparent motion of stars in the night sky due to the Earth's rotation. For those who don't know how that all works out, if you need to figure it out again, just basically that there's Wikipedia has always got some great stuff for you, but you can always check out some of the other guys out there who talk about this stuff in much greater detail than you'll probably hear tonight. So basically, in essence, depending on where you stand on this, uh, on this globe of ours, it changes how the effect of the star trails. You, basically, you should get clear dark skies, usually without a moon in it. Doesn't mean you can't get the moon in there. And of course, you need some cameras and some software to help out. So let's talk a little bit about the basic stuff. So basically, you gotta remember the Earth spins on its axis, right? Pretty straightforward. No big deal. Everyone I think pretty much kind of follows through on that stuff. But you know, what they when they talk about the North Pole, the South Pole pointing to the north, they call actually they're called celestial poles when you're talking about astronomy. These are the parts of the uh, the skies that actually the axis points directly at the North Pole or not the north, a star in the north from the north axis and into the south, which is kind of cool, at least according to the people down south, it spins the other way. So I don't know. I've never been down south. For those who have been down south, I'm assuming you, you guys can you back me up on that. But up here in the northern hemisphere, where everything spins correctly, where I'm just <laughs> you know, where everything spins around it, that, uh, on the other way, so you get to see that. But I, you know, personally, the effect to me looks the same. But of course, obviously, there's a difference in that. Now, there's also a thing that's called the celestial equator, and the celestial equator is basically where the north and the south. Uh, spins go in opposite directions. Now, this one was shot by uh, Sahid uh, Pacini, and this was uh, uh, featured on Astronomy Picture of the Day uh, back, I think, earlier this year. Uh, this feature combines 325 photos taken 30 seconds over 162 minutes, uh, taken during uh, after sunset earlier this month. The moonlight illuminates a snowy and desolate scene in northwest Iran. The bright, the bright streak behind the lone tree is the planet. Uh, the bright streak behind the lone tree is the planet Venus setting. So again, what the celestial equator is this is basically when you're looking at something. Oops, let me click this again. So you can see what the red lines there, when the north and south uh, spins are going in, in different directions. You notice that was one line, and that's called the celestial equator. Now, depending on where, you, again, as I stand on, on, this, on this little spinning sphere of ours, you get to see a variety of different trails, depending on which way you point your camera or point your vision. So, of course, if you're in the northern hemisphere, this is pretty much typical. And some of you got some southern ones I saw here as well, but you'll see some other things uh, uh, there. Now, when you're planning out your compositions for your star trails, it's kind of important to point the place in the right direction and work with whatever that's going to help you out with. If you got if you got cloudy skies in the north, turn the camera to the south. If you got cloudy skies to the south, point the camera to the east, and so forth and so forth. And of course, you get different views when you look on different points of the globe. 
Of course, in the Southern Hemisphere, it's basically the opposite. And then, of course, if you're on the equator, well, it looks a little bit different. You can find most of this information on PhotoPills. PhotoPills has a great resource for some of this stuff. You can always check them out. And, do so, and they also have some free guides you can also download as well. I downloaded one of their PDF guides. You can always check it out and see what they're doing. This is kind of like a little screen grab that I did of their PDF that they sent me. It has some wonderful information about some locations I've never been to that I would love to visit. And I think they have some really great shots in there and stuff like that. Though I did find that some of the links were broken when I was playing around with them. So when I went to click on the video to kind of see with this guy, then it popped up video unavailable. So take it for what it's worth. It's a free uh, PDF uh, document. It's got some great stuff that you can play around with as far as that goes. Now, if you haven't played with PhotoPills, it's a really cool little app that you could use to basically scroll through and, and figure out how things work. They have a thing with star trails where you can calculate the time for how long you need to shoot to get X amount of rotation, or you can actually talk, calculate the rotation angle, how long the star trail you would want. And of course you can flip around between north or south, whichever direction you want to pull at. PhotoPills is a great app for about $9.99. I recommend it. A lot of photographers I know in the group use it. This is not the only thing that's out there that you would have to you can look for. And there's certainly quite a bit out there to help out. There's another thing too, it's called spot stars. For spot stars, what that does is we're trying to make sure your stars look fairly sharp. You can tell what camera you have, but keep in mind, if they don't have your maker model, just find something that's close enough to it. Uh, that should be easy enough to find in there. Once you do all that, then you could find out by the focal length, whatever focal length you are. I always use real. I don't do the 35 millimeter equivalent. I type in the real, and then once I do that, then I can uh, shop by the, the sensor, I mean, the, uh, the f-stop, whatever my camera's lens f-stop is. Now, the one thing they put on there, which I didn't under, quite understand before until uh, till a few months ago, is about declination. Declination is north as a point north or south of the celestial equator. So where is the, or wherever the point's going to be at, if you're pointing it north or south of the celestial equator, that's where it's going to be. The closer the camera's pointed to the equator, the more the star train will be apparent at the pixel level. Now, accuracy is basically a way to tell if you want to see a little bit motion blur or if you want to look at really, really sharp stars. Keep in mind, if you're shooting an accurate, you do have to push the ISO as higher. I have found that out when I'm playing around with this stuff. If I, if, I can bl if I don't mind a little bit of motion blur in the stars, you can get by with a little bit lower ISO if you want to play around with that stuff. They also give you what's they call the NPF rule. I'm not going to go over the rule in its entirety, but basically it's a way of trying to get as close as you can to the amount of seconds you want to shoot. Keep in mind, not every camera goes to 9.14 seconds. You just go to the closest one. But everybody that, well, not everybody, most of the people I know use with something of the 500 rule or a variation thereof. The 500 rule is really a kind of an easy rule to do. You just take your focal length and divide it in there. So if you take it for 24 millimeters, you divide that into that, and that's your approximate shutter speed for that. So again, your ISO could be a little bit lower. If you got crop sensors, use 300 or 333 if you want to be more specific. If you're using crop sensors, 250, but keep in mind, PhotoPills figures that out for you. No, no heavy math needed. Uh, the couple other guys that are out there that do have some pretty cool uh, help. There's Astro Backyard, which some of you probably already know about, and there's LonelySpec.com. Again, these are all run by these other folks, and of course, they have other uh, services that they can offer for you out there, but they also have a lot of free calculations that you can always check out and try and see how that goes. It's a lot of fun just to see what other people are doing out there and see what they come up with. Now, does anybody have questions about any of that stuff at all about dealing with that type of uh, uh, location and things like that or with the apps or not quite understanding how it all works out? We'll get into the editing part in just a few minutes, but I just wanted to make sure everyone understands that it really, it just depends on where you, where you are on the planet and just trying to figure out where you want to see this. It's planning out your composition. It's like back to uh, uh, art, art 101, when they're talking about compositional type, where do you want to be? How do you want to see it and go from there? 
Stellarium works out really great for that because you can actually use this as, a, as on your desktop and you can download that and you can actually kind of plug in your camera, which I did over there, over here on the far right over here. I plug in the camera, I tell it what lens I'm using and it gives me an approximation of what I'm expected to see when I'm looking through there and what I would actually get. So I can kind of kind of map out my composition of what I expect to see if I'm pointing towards the north, if I was going to be so inclined to do that. Now, if you haven't seen Celerarium, you haven't used it, it's a very useful thing. It desktop applications for free. You can download an app for free, and there's also a paid app on there as well, too. And since I don't see any questions, anybody has any questions, keep in mind you can ask questions at any time. I'm going to talk about a little bit about some of the software out there. Now, some of you have probably used some of this software in greater detail than I do, uh, but there's a few of them out there that work really well. Uh, the Star Stacks and the Sequator. Star Stacks works on, on Mac, uh, Mac and Windows, and there's Sequator, which also works just on Windows for all I can see. Star Stacks, I thought they used to charge for that on the App Store from app, for Mac, but that may be just the App Store. But you can go to the website from there and you can download it directly. And I'll put these links uh, when I upload the thing on the uh, YouTube channel for all this stuff. But you can always check it out and you can see how the programs work. It's really cool. And of course, the not free software version is, of course, Photoshop. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can approach it on there, but this gentleman right here, Mr. Fisher, had a very easy enough way to do it and to comprehend how to do it if you're familiar enough with Photoshop. It worked out really well and you could have a little bit of fun playing around with that type of stuff. I would definitely recommend it, check it out if you can. So in Photoshop, basically what he recommended was that you take all your information, all your uh, pictures that you've shot and you basically throw it into Photoshop under a bunch of different layers. You would go into, uh, let's say like Lightroom and open up and say, open up everything as a stack layer, or you literally are gonna have to open each one, put it into your layer. That will take forever, of course. The key thing to do is to select all the layers and to lighten the layers. And once you do that, you could go in there and lighten them all and you get this instant effect of all these star trails, which is really kind of cool. Now he also recommends that you go in there and clean up some options like dealing with star trails, not star trails, plane trails and things like that, either remove those pictures with those things in there or just get rid of them all together. And that way you don't have to see them. Right here, this one right here is actually, there was a meteor that fell through this particular picture right there, which I thought was kind of cool. Now these were all shot with individual images right here, with both with the Photoshop and here at Star Stacks. Now Star Stacks, what they want you to do is you load up all these pictures. Now. They do recommend using darks, uh, what they call uh, dark, dark, pic uh, dark <clears throat> slides and lights and stuff like that, but you don't have to do that. It's not something that I think that I do. It's not something that you know, I think is, is important. The main thing is on the preferences when you're doing this stuff is you go into their setup tools, go to preferences for blending, you click uh, uh, select gap fill, because what that'll do is give you a little bit nicer presentation of your star trails. Now it should of course map out where the landscape is in all these pictures and should get it fairly close to it. And you can just basically go through the whole entire thing like that. And it comes out pretty cool. I, at least I like it. I thought it was really nice. Hey, yeah. Donna. Yeah. Hey, got a question. I noticed all those uh, files were all JPEGs mm -hmm. and um, I usually use raw files. Now, it might be a, an overkill. I get it, but uh, which is really mo mo more appropriate? Well, at Star Stacks, I haven't. I tried to dump some raws in there, and I couldn't do that. All I could do was dump the JPEGs. Oh, I see. So, so Star Stacks might only take JPEGs. If somebody's got a, a different version of it, because I thought I downloaded the most current version for my Mac, and it doesn't take every no. I wouldn't <clears> take no matter uh, how many times I open up, try to find the raw, wouldn't let me open them up. It's only the JPEG. Not part. even, not even Sequator. I think. Uh, they they were talking about handling raw, but they encourage you to use TIFF files uh, yeah. to export your images into TIFF and then use Equator. I use a different program on my Mac. Uh, let me see if I can find the name. 
Sure. It is called Stary, uh, Stary uh, Sky Stacker right. and Stary Landscape Stacker. And they also uh, will force you to export to TIFF files. Yeah. Yes. But St Star Stacks from a Mac, which is, again, a free app as well. It's really cool. And what this, this was a cool picture I shot a few, um, about a couple of years ago when I was up in the Smokies and, I, and all these fireflies are out. And I, you know, I was trying to get all these fireflies in these pictures. And of course, you know, I didn't do a good job uh, as far as I was concerned. There was all these small pinpoints of light and I couldn't really see what they were. And then when I threw it in the star stacks, this is what I got. <laughs> I thought this was pretty amazing, you know? So you get all, you get all those green dots are fireflies. Now, it's not the same firefly, but there's probably a few, of, most of them are pretty much the same firefly flying around, but. But I thought that was uh, pretty cool. I was pretty uh, tickled pink with that when I saw that. Uh, now that I know how to do it, I, I think I'm gonna uh, when I do see him again like that, I'm gonna be a little more try to be a little bit more thought thoughtful with the composition. But I thought that was uh, pretty cool when I looked at that type of stuff. Oops, go back over here. There we go. Now Sequator, like you said, uh, Lynn, it's they really want you don't don't like you using it they want you to export as a tiff but i was actually able to open my nikon nef files in here and do it into it but like i said it takes a little bit of while so i went back to the jpegs and i just did the jpegs uh it did okay i think i, I don't use sequator much because I, I i have it on the windows computer here at the store and it looks like there's a couple of gaps that I'm seeing throughout the whole entire thing. But I love how it did. This is an unedited version uh, on this right here. So it did a pretty good job mapping out the, uh, the whole entire ground. You can actually do the work in the layers, like layer out the sky and, and separate it from the uh, ground. And it, again, I thought it did a pretty wonderful job at this, which I thought was pretty cool. Now, my other thing that I like the most, of course, is dealing with uh, is the ones you know I use is that uh, I use it says hello? hello. All right. So the other thing I like about this particular one is Olympus Live Comp. They have a lot of it's a really useful tool for people who are just trying to do this. And it basically does what Photoshop does, but on the camera itself. And it takes your raw files that compiles them into basically a stack of images. That are done that what's it does it takes the ambient picture first the very that gets the first exposure and then it just piles every time the light moves and again it does something similar with the with i had only one lone firefly as it was flying through there but you can see it pops up in a couple of spots right there and of course tons of planes flying through and all that other fun stuff So basically with all these different types of software, it's really depends upon which one you think is going to work best for you. Again, Sequator, Star Stacks, and you said with, the other one was you called Star Stacking, Wooden? Stary, Stary uh, Sky Stacker. And they have Stary Landscape Stacker. It is, a, it is the same, done by the same person. They The one is supposed to be used for uh, track uh, images. Of, right. of the sky and the other one if you have any kind of uh you know uh landscape you should use the other program yeah yeah there's also a, tr a trick in photoshop where you can just take one image and one image that you shot and then turn it into star trails too <laughs> which i thought was really cool but then you could also make your own north your own polaris point in there too which i i thought was pretty neat I think I've got the listed here later on in the presentation, but I think it was kind of cool. Now, uh, I just want to talk a little bit too about something the group's got going on right now. Uh, everyone uh, who submitted, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I think we have an excellent display at the Manatee Performing Arts Center. These were just a couple of shots I managed to catch uh, from some of the display pieces out there on my phone. Uh, I got tags up there for everybody, you know, as, as far as that goes, there's a little bit of a description of that. Uh, anybody who gave me information for contact info, it's listed on there as well. Uh, Mac Aldrich was the guy who kind of pointed me in this direction at there. Uh, it's going to be up until sometime in April. I don't have the date yet. Janine hasn't gotten back to me. She's kind of the, the person who runs the show over there. 
So I'm going to be, again, touching <clears throat> back with Janine and Mac and go from that type of stuff and see where this goes to. But it's going to be sometime in April. Uh, if you can't get it, just let me know when I do get the date, and I'll try to make some other arrangements with you. But if we can, what I like to do when the date gets published, just come down and pick it up during the day, and that'll be perfectly fine. But I really like the way the display came out. I think it looks pretty good. And uh, if you get a chance to stop at the Manatee Performing Arts Center, please check it out. It's, it's certainly a wonderful thing. It's the first time the group has had an exhibition anywhere. And I really am really proud of it. And I think it looks really, really awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody. Um, Donna, yes. Donna, can we just stop in during the day there? or? How, yeah, they, they, the box office well, is open from 10 to uh, I think five when there's no, no performance. So you can go into the lobby and check it out. Now, there's not too much that's coming up uh, right now that I've got on, on top on the schedule. Uh, there's a number of things that, I, I, that, are, that are close that are coming up that I want to take advantage of uh, that I'm going to try to do. And this is for my own personal thing, but you guys are more than welcome to join me. This all depends on the weather, and the weather's been kind of iffy lately, so I'm not sure how well this is going to work out. But I want to try to photograph the full moon setting over the Venice fishing pier. Uh, the Venice, cal Venice government, municipal government, is putting together a calendar for 2023, and they want photographers to submit some pictures. One of the things they said we could do is the Venice Fishing Pier, and I'm going to try to do something there. And it, and it has to be, uh, it can't be a long panoramic. It has to, they all have to be horizontal. So that's what I'm going to do. And of course, it could be anywhere around there. They don't want people in their shots, so I'm going to try to do something like that. Uh, the full moon is going to be setting around 826 a.m. And I'm going to try to get there a little bit earlier to try to do a few other shots and things of that nature. Now, on April 3rd, this is basically like a Sunday morning because I, uh, you know, my, my, I work on, on Friday and Saturday. So I think about heading down there, taking a nap with a really long nap Saturday afternoon and drive down to maybe Kirby Store or someplace else. Because Kevin Hanley uh, sent me this the other day. Uh, he says, you know, he pointed out that Venus, Mars, and Saturn are going to be up in the sky around six o'clock in the morning, <laughs> which I thought that'd be kind of cool to get the Milky Way with them in the picture, which I thought that would be a really cool shot to do. So I'm thinking, and again, it doesn't have to be a Kirby store or park. He's looking at a few other places that we might go and try to check it out and see if we can get some excellent shots that way. But the idea is if, we, if nothing's picked out, the, the default uh, location would be Kirby Storter because there's usually some empty sky. The trouble is with Venus, Saturn, and Mars, it's low on the horizon and they got those big tall trees right there. It's trying to find a gap where you can see all this stuff in there when it shows up. But I thought that might be a kind of a fun shoot to try to go do. But that's not going to be until around eight, the beginning of April for that type of thing. Now, I don't know if anybody has any other suggestions. You're more than welcome to send them to me. Or if you want to do a, your own meetup, because I, you don't have to wait for me in my work schedule. You can always do your own thing and get with the group. You don't have to use the meetup. You can use the Facebook page and say, hey, does anybody want to go out and do this? I know a few have done that already. Uh, I know I do that with a few other folks from time again, like I did something with Greg. I do something with uh, Glidden and Margaret and, and Mary every so often. So again, you know, you guys are more than welcome to do that. It doesn't necessarily always have to be a giant group activity, but though it's always fun to go out with a group in the middle of the, in the middle of O Dark 30, just in case the, the Sasquatch comes out to try to eat you. So, you know, there's always that. Now, since I get to work with Johnson Photo Imaging, I have some resources that I can tap into. Uh, uh, we're going to have uh, uh, um, um, Erica Robertson's going to do a, a, an online webinar from Tamron, and she's going to be talking about low light and into the night. And obviously, she's going to be mentioning some Tamron glass. She's a, she is a Sony shooter, from what I can tell. And you're going to basically want to take a look at some of her stuff. I mean, you can see she'll go over some of those things. If you got some Sony uh, questions about some of the Tamron glass, by it all means, uh, take a look at some of that stuff. <laughs> Uh, she's, I've, I've, I've talked with her before. She's very knowledgeable. She knows her craft very well. These are some of her pictures right here. I would definitely would say, 
take advantage of it if you can. And certainly ask her, you know, you can ask her detailed questions about stuff. It should be about an hour's worth of time ish. Uh, she's certainly going to stick around and answer as many questions as, as she can as well, too. So it's well worth that as if you can. Now, for those of you who don't already or, or who have Nikon shooters and you're excited about the Nikon Z9 that's coming out or it's out ish, uh, they're going to be doing an online webinar on April 12th. They haven't sent me the link yet, but when that comes, to, but if you go through Eventbrite or if you go to the meetup group, uh, as soon as I get the link, I'll post that as soon as I can. As soon as I get the, the, the online link, they're hosting it themselves. We won't be doing the hosting. We're just telling, spreading the word out for there. Any questions before we jump into this? No, no, I just wanted to mention that for those of you who wanna travel, there is the dark week uh, coming up. Oh, I forgot about they, that. Thank they, you. They have, I believe it's five locations, two in California, three in Utah. And I can share later on, you know, Dono can share the dates. Yeah. Uh, but you got to register because uh, I believe tomorrow it goes public. The only reason I know about it is because I was, I was registered to go two years ago and then the pandemic happened and it got canceled. Uh, but tomorrow is going to go public. And I believe uh, in California, they're going to they're gonna be at, at the end of March, they're going to be at Death Valley uh, is one of them. And the other place is somewhere near Death Valley. And then the following week in, in April, um, I mean, yeah, in, in, in April, they go to... Uh, I believe is uh, Bryce Canyon. Um, it's three places in Utah. I can I can share all the details. So, oh yeah, definitely want you to uh, if you can. Um, um, I'll look it up and, and put it on the chat. That's you know, what I say. If you can, if you can, if you can look it up, put it in the <laughs> chat. And that way, when it's in the chat, it'll be saved in the chat, and I can always tag it or send it out to the everybody when I put when I post the YouTube stuff out. My goal is to put the YouTube uh, uh, once I post it up to YouTube, it should go out hopefully on tomorrow, but it'll take a while for the YouTube to process it. All right. Now I did something a little bit different with this photo review. Now you don't have to do it like this. It's up to you if you guys want to follow along with it if you like. Excuse me, sorry. Where did I put it? There it is. Now, what I did differently right here is I took a page off of uh, Joe Eidelman. I don't, I don't know if you guys follow him a lot on Facebook or Instagram. He's a really great photographer. He talks about the critical review and the critiquing process. And he came and he has a list of things that he think people should, you know, kind of think about posting what they really want a kind of a, a critical response for that type of thing. Would Micah State Park work for Milky Way shots? Of course it will. It's an amazing spot to go and you can always check it out. Uh, again, you're going to have to kind of plan out where you're going to go, where the location is going to be. Uh, but right now it's the, uh, well, not right now, but pretty soon at the, the core will be high enough to go out and do that. Uh, it depends on where you want to go. If you can camp there at night, that's the way to do it. Uh, otherwise, they don't let people after hours anymore. Yeah, they've done that. They stopped at least some, and as far as I know, last time they had to, uh, 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 that when COVID hit, they stopped letting people just uh, get, because um, uh, usually if it was after hours, if you just talk to the ranger, you can go in, but they've taken that, that part of that away, even if you had an annual pass. So you have to go in there and camp in there and stuff like that. Uh, why not go there uh, April 3rd? Because uh because that's not a very dark piece of sky. That's like a, I, I forget the exact Bortle number, but it's like a five, I think. Uh, the, it's a, you're in the Bortle three, I think down on and Kirby store and some parts of the Everglades. And so that's the, that's why it's a little bit darker. And I want to try to get some of that. Plus you got to find a really empty sky for some of those planets. If you want to <coughs> Let's see what else. Um, okay. So anyway, we're talking about the uh, photo review. So instead of talking about, yeah, he says what you can do is you can list the camera type, lenses. If it's a zoom, make the the focal length, the aperture, shutter, ISO, all the typical things. But he also goes into talking about lighting. 
lighting would be a, a great way to again talk about stuff especially if we're doing any uh uh you know uh, light placement modifiers things like that especially if you use light painting um it also he wants you to ask a question or at least he mentions you should ask questions like why did you answer questions why did you take the photo shot what was the goal and how did you achieve it and if you could do something different what would you change and basically this will help people kind of get more informed about your work and if you want to do more about it now you don't have to do that tonight if you're not interested in that type of stuff i'm certainly going to try to apply it with any type of things i'm doing and, and things like that would dinner island so i just saw something would dinner island be a good spot for photographing the milky way or pine glades lake in the everglades it's possible we'll have to, I'll have to take a look at those locations and see and see what's going on. I'll mention it to Kevin too as well. All right. So with that, with that, let's go into that. It looks like Glidden just posted the link for that stuff. Thank you, Glidden. So let's go over some of the things. Now, Greg Adams sent me some stuff. Greg uh, took me down to the Everglades and was very gentle with me and showed me some really cool places. Now, here's some really cool stuff right here that I thought was pretty cool, Greg. Yeah, this was uh, Mount Shasta, right? It is. Now and this is, if you, uh, yes, sir. If you look at Mount Shasta, they're about uh, three quarters of the way to the summit. Those lights are the uh, climbers and their headlamps over that almost one hour uh, <laughs> star trail event. That's really cool. Yeah. All right. Now, cool. I'm, I'm sorry, can anybody see the, I mean, assuming you can see the orange pointer, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So this is, again, for those of you who haven't taken star trail photos, this right here, you're pointing towards the North Star or Polaris, the celestial North Pole. And as I think, Greg, you were pointing out, that's a fairly common or typical thing for most people to do, but there's plenty of other more, some interesting shots that way as well. But I just love the composition, especially with this uh, lake, the way it is, you got a little bit of whatever this light uh, flare coming up, nice little reflection right there. You can see, you'd see these guys' <laughs> headlamps reflecting in the lake water there too, which I think is even, even more awesome. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's probably three or more miles away mm -hmm. and getting a reflection in the water. That is pretty yeah. amazing, actually. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. There's like what, a campground right there, somebody doing something right there. Again, I thought that was pretty cool. So you think you were pretty successful with these shots? I love this one. <laughs> I thought that was an awesome shot. That is a, a very, very uh, in the middle of nowhere uh, location in, in uh, Southern California, uh, the Anzo Borrego Desert and uh, Borrego Springs is the uh, town where you you come into and then just outside of Borrego Springs is um, about, I'm gonna say it's like 130 of these huge um, sculptures, metal sculptures. And you know, it's very dark sky there, but you can see a lot of, a lot of light pollution on the horizon there. But um, they're, they're really uh, amazing. This guy, somebody there commissioned one guy to do all of these things, which must have happened over many, many years. And uh, it's all completely open to the public. You can drive right up to them. And, uh, and there'll always be people out there shooting. And people come from all over the world to, to shoot there. That's awesome. I really, I, I just especially I love the placement of it with the Polaris right above the, uh, that little uh, V right there of, of the, uh, right, the dragon right there. That's really, <laughs> I mean, how apropos is that? <laughs> well, uh, that dragon, uh, the, the, what you're seeing is probably about 10 or so feet tall. Right. But uh, it actually is about 350 feet long. And it, it goes underneath the ground and then comes back up, goes back under the ground, goes under a road, comes back up again. And uh, so it's, it's really a monstrous sculpture that you certainly can't capture uh, all right. at one time. You might be able to get some of it in the daytime. Now, did you do any light painting on this one? Yeah, the only thing is light painting painted is the uh, dragon, which I think I did with a, just a plain old country flashlight. 
Yeah, I really like that a lot. Any, anybody else have anything? These are great, Greg. I, I appreciate you uh, sharing these things. I think I, I, I'm certainly envious of both of these locations. <laughs> well, I'm going to go. I'm retired. I can go almost any time. Yeah, I, I, got, I got another 15. Where, where, how old am I? I got another 12 more years <laughs> before I can actually uh, yeah. do that. Chat. But anyway, I, I really love this a lot. And uh, would you, did you have any trouble with planes or anything like that in there? Is there any kind of planes? I didn't notice any. Um, okay. I did not remove any that, that I can recall. Now That's that good. I look deep into it, well, it's hard to, it's really hard to say. Yeah. I don't well, this recall was a few, removing them. Was this a couple of years ago or, so, or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it's been, uh, uh, I'm going to say probably about four years ago. Cool. All right, cool. Which, what so was what, the, were your, what were your settings to get this, Greg? Uh very typical settings for uh, for this shot for me is I shoot that in raw, and uh, it would have probably been uh, 2.8 or 3.5 in ISO 6400. Really? Okay. Yeah, and how many shots did you take for how long? I don't know. I mean, I, I vary uh, mostly because I get bored, and <laughs> I... Uh, you know, I might shoot for uh, probably the minimum is about 20 minutes, but I'm going to say this one is uh, closer to an hour. There was a there was another couple that were shooting right next to me, and they were doing a star trail, and they were going to do some crazy amount of time, like a couple hours or something. And I, I, I just don't have the patience to uh, be still for two hours, and so I think I stopped at a, at an hour, and I, I'm not sure when they finished theirs up. And uh, then I had uh, four women show up, and one of which was a photographer, and uh, we shot together for probably an hour. And uh, so it was, it was a really, really fun evening uh, with lots of people out there out to do the same thing. Well, really it's a great fun. shot. It's great. Thanks for sharing. Well, thank you. How many seconds for each exposure, Greg? Uh, typically, uh, 20 to 25 seconds. 25 seconds is probably uh, the standard for, for myself doing starter trails, maybe up to 30 seconds. But I, I don't like doing those, uh, those uh, two and three minute uh, uh, exposures for star trails because uh, if you get a plane coming through, it's a lot harder to remove uh, that, at least to me anyway. So I, I tend to keep them uh, shorter and then I, they're easier for me to edit that. And then uh, I just put them together in Photoshop, which is, which I think you already showed how to do that, uh, oh. Dono, and it's extremely simple. Yeah, I, I was, uh, I've never did it in Photoshop. I've always did it with, uh, with my Olympus Live composite. And when I saw how you could do it in Photoshop, I'm like going, well, that, that's, that's, that's easy. <laughs> it's extremely easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, even I can do it. <laughs> exactly. Well, Greg, thank you so much. Uh, I think Nancy uh, wrote right in there says she loves your dragons and star trails. Thanks for sharing. Uh, thank you, Nancy. Hey, Donna. Yo. I, I checked the two locations. Uh, they asked, um, I mean, mm -hmm. what was it? Hold it. Dinner Island and uh, right. Pine Lakes Lake. I'll right. say the first one, Dinner Island, is better now at the beginning of the season. Even though it is kind of like wild island, you're going to be shooting into uh, some kind of uh, light pollution, but okay. they should have uh, dark skies above them. Uh, and then the second one, I believe it will be a lot better towards the middle and the end of the season. Okay. Uh, because because if you go now to Pine Glades Lake, you're going to be shooting into uh, the light pollution of. Uh, I believe it is uh, Homestead, Florida. So forget it. You're not going to be able to see anything. No. But if you shoot, you know, in the middle of the season or even later uh, towards the end, you're going to be shooting into Everglades National Park, which should be pretty dark. Yeah, that's like a Bortle too, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So it's really dark yeah, out there. Yeah, if, if it was up to me, I will go instead of... Uh, stopping at Pine Lakes, I'll follow that road all the way to the very end, 
and and you will be shooting into a bottle two or one because you're shooting into the gulf so it's even better cool so you're saying go to flamingo i believe so i'm if not for stand, it if you can stand the mosquitoes there <laughs> it's the only problem well maybe november october uh, maybe okay Remember, October, you're going to be getting towards the tail end of the season for, Mil for Milky Way. Right. And instead of having, you know, part of the arch or maybe vertical, you're going to have it, what I call stream that is still right being up. the yeah. other way around. So, mm -hmm. and then you get into a very short window of time to shoot. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, Dono, last time we shot, what, we had 15, 20 minutes to, to oh. get it? Yeah, late October. Yeah, 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 exactly. There's not that much time when it gets towards late October. You know, you're better to go out there, like it's like you said, around but um, what's before October? Yeah, like like between August, like September, between May, May, and August, you're gonna be fine in Flamingo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Donald, I have a I, question. I this is Anthony. Uh, I just got on to oh, my my Planet Pro, and I was looking at Milky Way Week, so to speak, and um, it will tell you I'm on outside of West Palm Beach. So um, it will tell you how many hours of dark that you have, whether or not you have over four. So um, March 28th through uh, April the 7th, you have over four hours of Milky Way darkness at night. Yep. So if you're going to shoot, that, that would be a good time to, to pick your, you know, rendezvous. Yeah, right. Nancy, yeah. Nancy, what they're talking about is the core. How many hours yeah. the core is going to be visible? Mm -hmm. right. yeah. That's when the core is going to be visible, right? And, yeah. and then you're looking at both the core and then how many hours of that core it is you're going to have darkness. Right. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, Nancy. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, what, what were you saying, uh, uh, Greg? Uh, well, I was uh, one one thing. I was wondering uh, when you're talking about flamingo down there. I wondered if you, when you took the group down there, if you went all the way down to flamingo. And I was wondering whether the uh, abandoned gas station was still there. I uh, then I don't know. I did. I didn't end up taking the group down there because I, I I I couldn't make the journey I, with the amount of turn. I was just going down and turning around, and uh, I just didn't make the journey down there. So I don't know if it was still there or not. I think it is. Well, when we went down there the last time, that was been a few months ago. I was down there with Dono, and and um, it looked like they had giant construction uh, dumpsters down there, and it looked like they were getting ready to demolish it. So uh, yeah. it's a it's a very cool thing that I love to shoot. Yeah. yeah. Flamenco Campground is under construction until I. I don't think they're going to open up until almost June. That's right. That's the one that's near Fleming, uh, they're near Flamingo Point, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jackie, what's the Flamingo Pine Lakes? What city is this? Uh, this is down in the Everglades. I don't think there's a city in the Everglades, is there? <laughs> and then the well, you, go past, you go past Homestead. Yeah, you go post Ham Homestead. Yeah, long way <laughs> past Homestead. Yeah, it is in, it, on Route 936. Yeah, uh, that's 93, it. 36, I'm sorry. Yeah. 9336. Let me put yeah. it on the chat. Yeah. Yeah, it's a long ways away. It, it takes yeah, me. Well, about, about, it takes me from uh, from the West Coast, from where we're at here in Florida. It takes me about six ish hours to get to some place in the Everglades. <laughs> And that, is, and that is if you don't hit traffic in Miami. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah. That's digging through Homestead mm -hmm. to get through there. Yep. Yep. I don't know why you wouldn't take the highway the whole way, but but it's still, it's closer for me. It's an hour and a half at the most. That's right. Yeah. My favorite place. <laughs> Let's see. Somebody, I just saw a thing that came up, raised his hand, but I can't see who it is. So I'm not sure where they're at. All right. Well, let's, let's move mosey on. So uh, let's go here to Mr. Glidden. You're the next contestant. Step right on up. Wow. 
Nice. Where was this Thank at, you. Mr. Glidden? That was in uh, the old Mayaka um, little park. Is is if you follow for for those of you that live in, near Sarasota, if you follow Fruitville all the way to the very end, uh, it turns into. I cannot remember the road because one one way is named a certain way. You know, going north is 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 named a different way. But if you cross that road, you're going to a dirt road, and a little bit further down, there is a little tiny little preserved park. And we were we were there at that time. And the the light painting of the trees is courtesy of of one of the ladies that was shooting with us that night. That she decided to leave and then lit up the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> all the pictures all my my star trails uh i i usually do 20 frames of one minute at iso 3200 um usually i'll have it fully open the lens at 2.8 and basically when you when you blend them as light in, in in photoshop it will it will you know do the full circle so I'm like Greg, I don't have the patience to be there one hour, two hours, forget it. You know, it's like, I'll get what I get and, and that's it. And I believe the reason this picture looks a little bit purplish is because I had a light pollution filter in front of the lens. Oh. Was it that Nissi filter you use? Is that yep. what it was? Yeah, it will cut, it will cut a bunch of, you know, light wavelength and then it will leave you with purple and red, basically. Right. Yeah, those Nissi filters are cool. A shameless plug. We, we sell them here at Johnson Photo now. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got to be good at my sponsors because they still give me a paycheck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and by the way, if, if any of you, you know, that are local want to go to that place, um, done on, I found out that we got there the very first time and there was a gate. But it has just a little chain, you know, hanging from a nail that you pull it off, open the gate, and go in. So, yeah, it's part of the. Uh, uh, I forget what what's the name of the trail that goes through my Mayaka through Florida. The uh, I forget what it's called, but it's part of that net, that the Florida Trail System, and uh, you can go in there, park your car, and walk the trail a bit down there. It's one of the stopping points where people either can pick you up or you can start from there. It's kind of cool. All right. Uh, this looks like uh, our other super secret place. <laughs> no, no, that that that, that would uh, I say that is secret, but that is uh, Wild Island, the, the the outlet channel going out of uh, Lake Ixotopa. I hope I didn't kill the name. Um, and basically, we usually shoot the other way towards the east to get the the Milky Way in the you know the early season. And we decided that I don't remember why we turned around and said, oh, let's do uh, uh, Star Trails. Was it because we were waiting for the moon to go down or something like that? Yeah, probably. Something remember. like that. Whose car is that over there to the right? Um, car? I don't see. Oh, well, I think, I think it's, it was somebody driving by because there was that, that night was only you, Margaret, and I. Right, I, I think so. He's, yeah. staring, he's staring at you. Oh, it was, it was, remember, there was some people fishing. Yeah, in, that's right. In, in that, there that night. Yeah. Well, I, I love these compositions, Glidden. I think they work out really well. You know, again, you know, pointing towards the north, you get some nice star trails effect and stuff like that. Like you and, and Greg, I, I, I myself get bored after, if, I, if I'm, I'm 45 minutes to an hour, I'm pretty much done. <laughs> at that point i kind of move on from there you know it's kind of like why i picked up a second camera so i can move on from that particular stuff <laughs> so you know yeah stuff like that uh so uh, jackie wants to know uh do you like all the nissi filters uh, um I i'm i have a mixed bag so i don't want to be plug other companies but i have a mixed <laughs> bag i i carry it's okay some Nissi and some leaf filters. And, and depending on what I'm shooting, I use one or the other. Um, if I want really warm colors, 
you know, and so on. I'll switch to Nisi if I want more neutral. Uh, I'll use Lee, but I will tell you one thing: the the holder kit, actually, not not even the latest. I think I have the V6. Um, I love it ten times better than the Lee filter, oh, especially really? especially their switch uh, unit that you can have one filter going one way and the other going a different way. I mm -hmm. love it. I love it. You know, um, I threw away all the other not threw away, but put them away all the other my bag old and and i think nisi is the only one who does uh true night skies but oh i lost glidden glid's god well, got I'll, I'll, well they're, they're, i have been shooting the milky way uh that night i got bored uh and basically decided let me see what happened if i point to the south you know, with the Milky Way in the way, how will the star trails look? And this is what I ended up having. Wow. And I think my, I just got a message here that says my internet's unstable. So if I disappear, somebody text me, let me know. <laughs> just give that a heads up. All right, Glidden. So this is cool. This is, looks like it's the, uh, the South that you're pointing towards ish. That's right. That is correct. Yeah. Towards the Southwest. Now, where was this at? That was in Puerto Rico. Oh, okay. <coughs> yeah. It looks like you got a little bit thicker trails. Was it because you're doing the longer times or? I don't think so. I don't, you know that I don't have the patience for that. It, it was 20 minutes at 20 okay. frames of one minute each. And that one was minute. it. Okay. So yeah, yep. so we did one minute. Ex so that's probably why they're a little bit thicker because you did longer exposures. That's that, yeah. that Usually that's, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. The, again, I really like that, you know, with everything, it works out really well. You know, I, I, I still, I think, I, I think that's my favorite one. The reason why I like it, it's not necessary because the star trails are cool, but there's this guy staring at you, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like that guy. You know, I think that's cool. It's a, it's a nice little thing, you know, playing on that somebody's watching you, you know, that type of stuff. Okay. And Julie, you, you, I know you came down that, was it that night uh, uh, to go uh, to do that to Star Trails? But I didn't see you, at least I don't remember running into you that night, but I saw that you got down to SUNY land and I thought uh, these were super awesome because it was a lot better than what I thought I, thought I did. Because uh, I really loved the fact that you lit the, uh, the, um, at, the at the park. And, oh, you were just an oil well park. Well, I really love this thing. It's it's an, I like it a lot for myself. I think that you did a great job, you know, and I love the, the, the fact that you left the plane trail in there. Cause I think that's apropos some other guys shooting uh, laser beams down there, which I like. And of course you got the lone firefly bouncing around and, <laughs> and the whole shot. So that's cool too. I, I really love the, the whole direction of it. It looks like it was a super wide angle, at least based on what I can look, it looks right here. So yeah, but I really think this is a uh, super cool. Or, yeah, but the super the super wide angle with those with those you know vertical lines tilted, they look like they're going into the board. Right, yeah. right. That's what I was saying. It looks like the lines Good going point. into that. Yeah, it was a twenty uh, one point eight. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I love it. I think that look came out really really nice. I tickled pink when I saw that one. And of course, I think this is your other one right here. Again, I love the uh, the, the the different direction you took on that point, going to the north and getting the silhouette. Again, I thought that worked out really well. I, you know, I, I have to thank Greg for pointing out to this place because to me, because uh, I never I never knew we had an oil well uh, park in Florida. <laughs> so Greg was the one who pointed it out to me, and I thought that was a really cool place to go to go hang out and shoot and it's fairly dark out there and i was very uh pleased with the with the overall thing again i like this right here again with the wide angle lens because you get this nice little pull towards this direction again it's a lovely composition julie i, I think that worked out really well and I, I i think that's someone what was your do you have your iso you remember what the iso was julie about a hundred stack of 30 second shots yeah I'm assuming edited in Lightroom type of thing. Yeah, so, yeah, Photoshop, yeah, 
I'm, I'm sorry, I meant Photoshop. <laughs> All right, let's see who's next. Phoenix. All right. Phoenix actually uh, came out with us uh, that night. And so she got the celestial equator really nice inside there, which I thought was really cool. That's you know, very cool. Yeah, so it says right going across right there. I that's love, what a novice, that's what happens when you're a novice. You don't know what you're doing. <laughs> well, that's fine. And I think you did a really good job of putting it together. I know there's looks like there's some doubling up in there and stuff like that, but that doesn't bug me as far as that goes. I just love this as a pattern on its own. And, you know, especially again with the nice arches in between there and cutting across right there as far as that goes. Again, I just like the way it looks. I like the direction of it. And again, the doubling up of some of the trails, again, doesn't bug me at all. How did that happen? I just uh, followed the directions for Photoshop. Uh, something just was out of alignment. That's basically what it is. It's, it's just either that or you doubled up on a few frames in there. That's my guess. Um, That's my guess. I yeah, I don't know. Okay, thank you. No problem. Hey, uh, Big Al just put a, 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 it's a, Don, thanks for finding the oil well. Yep, you're welcome, Nancy. And uh, shot the next day. Cool. Uh, Alan, uh, Big Al says he lives in Wellington, Florida. Can anyone recommend a photo club in Palm Beach area? Uh, sure. If anybody knows one, just uh, leave, it, leave it in there. That'd be cool. Just moved from Connecticut. Awesome. And Miss Lisa, I hope you're, are you still, I hope you're still around, Miss Lisa. I love this one yeah. right here. Yeah. That's really cool. Again, I thought she did a fantastic job. This was your first star trail, was it you said, right? Uh, uh, without the Olympus, right? Right, right. First time. It's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Even even the yeah. far flies are, are in there. Really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you could see them bounce. It was, it, I, I'm pretty sure it was just the one firefly just bouncing around, just photobombing us as we were out there. Because there it goes there, there's there, there's there, bouncing around. I think that's pretty cool. And uh, and you can see where there's some cloud cover right there kind of creeping right. in. But that's fine. I, I think that works out really well. Because when we were there, the north was really just covered <laughs> in clouds. And uh, so we, we ended up pointing towards the south uh, to get any kind of star trails again. So I thought, again, Nice expanse sky, great great use of the landscape in the foreground. Now, was this with somebody driving by, or did was that somebody just doing their own little light painting down there? No, that was yeah, that was me just doing using a flashlight. Oh, okay, cool. So yeah, I think that worked out pretty well. So maybe this might be a good spot, just looking at the horizon line, where the planets might be in the shot right there. So uh, if I was just thinking ahead with Kirby Storter for the upcoming uh, uh, shot we were talking about before. So that might be- I don't cool. think so, Dono. Do you think it'd be lower? They're gonna be, they're gonna be, no, they're gonna be towards the east, I believe. Over More there. towards the east. Over remember, there. Remember, remember when we went there like two, two years ago that I ended up getting, I think it was Venus between the two uh, vent stack from the, for the uh, restrooms. Right. I think they're going to be more towards, you know, Miami and, and that light pollution area. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Well, Lisa, I think you did a fabulous job. Again, I'm assuming Photoshop edits and stuff like that, or did you use it? Yeah, it was just, it was just using uh, Photoshop. And uh, I did crop some on the right hand side that was cloudier. Right. I had a little bit broader, uh, perspective, but I ended up cropping on the right as quite a few clouds. Right. Let's go to the next one. And this is Nancy. Uh, I apologize, Nancy. I was going by what I saw uh, in the uh, meetup. No, no problem. I just did the same thing. I knew it was online. <laughs> no, I saw, the, I saw, I, 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 did, I wasn't sure about which Nancy it was. So I just went with the spelling that was on meetup. So I hope I got the spelling right. <laughs> That's, that's close. <laughs> there was three Nancys in the office that I worked. Oh, so okay. and I've always dove, so it's always been Nancy. So that became my nickname. And it's been okay, cool. Matched in for years. Anyhow, um, I sort of changed what I was doing with nights, night shots. Right. Um, the I've been shooting one shot for this guy to figure out what my ISO should be. I have an Icon D750 uh, 
with a 20 millimeter 1.8 lens. And generally I shoot at about F2. And I do the night sky for 20 seconds to find out what it looks like. Um, I also changed my uh, white balance uh, so that it uh, has more blue to it, so to sort of see what it looks like. Well, the night that I shot that, I just set white balance at 4,000, didn't play with it. Um, and when I got back into post, I had to do a little more work. Um, what I also did in this was, once I got my, my, what my ISO should be, I shot three 10 minute, actually 10 minute and 40 second exposures that were of an ISO that was like about 400, 500 ISO. And then I shot another one that I did some light painting. Uh, so that's what you're seeing as part of that light painting. That's what lightens that up. The light painting, I've had two different flavors. And one, I, I have some lights and I leave the ISO setting the same as the night sky. And I shoot with heavily covered gel over top of the lenses. So if you're shooting and you've got a lot of people and you don't want to destroy their photos with your flashlight, that's why I have these heavy gels. When I do that, and there's no one else around, uh, uh, those heavy gels work at, at the same setting as your night sky. But when you shoot just with a white flashlight or a car light or whatever, then I take it back down to about an ISO 500 and I shoot it at four and I shoot for 20 seconds. So this photo is sort of a blend mix up of that. Um, the night I shot there, I had uh, two cars come in with about six guys and <laughs> they were ready for their smoke party. They were smoking cigars anyhow. <laughs> what else? They, and they were over behind me. I kind of marched over and said, hey, you know, you kind of screwed up my photo. <laughs> this is, can you just keep your car lights 20 minutes? They were nice about it. They figured, okay, okay mouthy enough. They weren't going to bother me. <laughs> Well, that's how that photo came out. Cool. Well, I really like how, again, I love the composition of that. I love the way you, you lit up the, uh, the oil well. And again, it's just, it's a nice little soft glow amongst the whole thing. Again, yeah, you can see a little bit of a cloud creeping under there, but that doesn't, again, that, that doesn't bug me at all. <laughs> I, I just, well, you know, it is what it is. If you go online, there's that um, Richard Tassi out of uh, uh, Australia. He has some really nice tutorials about uh, night sky and, and light painting. Yep. Yeah, he's uh, another one. That, yeah, yeah. You, if you haven't been to that site, go there and, and look that up. Yeah. Actually, during the pandemic, Richard Tassi put all his workshops, all of them, I think it's 20 of them, for free on on YouTube. For free. <laughs> yeah, he, yes. he was just asking whatever donation you could you could do, uh, but he put all his his tutorials online. Yeah, and he has sample photos that you can download to to do the post process. You can do a bunch of stuff. I think now he's getting. I imagine the guy has to make money, so he's getting into not Patreon, but kind of where you can pay a little fee and have uh, sessions like this one over Zoom, you know, a group session to discuss and so on, or you can pay him to have one-on-one -on -one sessions online. Uh, but, but to me, Dono knows about it because I keep, you know, preaching, you know, about this guy. Uh, he, you know, if you cannot follow his instructions, then you have no business doing astrophotography whatsoever because he will walk you step by step with all the little, you know, oh, put this in, on, on Photoshop, do this, do that, and so on. It's really cool. Um, Jackie, I will, I will, I will put uh, the ch his channel on the chat. Just, just keep an eye on it. Let me, mm -hmm. let me look it up. Sorry, I'm just answering somebody's question real quick here. All right, cool beans. I, again, that's a, it's a wonderful uh, picture. I'm I, that's awesome. I thank you so much for sharing that, Nancy, and thank, thank you, every, you, thank you, everybody else for sharing. I appreciate that. So uh, Greg was earlier asking me about how it all went with the uh, the trip out to uh, uh, the, the, the 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 day I went out there to go do it, and when, the one that Nancy and Lisa uh, gleefully 
<laughs> I, I say gleefully tagged along. <laughs> so this was basically what we kind of ran into the first time. It was a bunch of clouds happening up over there. My goal of this whole particular one was to try to get a blended shot with star trails behind this one. I had been out there earlier with Greg, uh, you know, like I said, about a couple of months, a month or so before, uh, to shoot when he, we shot this, and, and Greg did some light painting on there, which was awesome. And I wanted to really try to go out there and just maybe do a blended image of the whole thing. Unfortunately, this is what I had. This is the best I could come up with. I did a little tweaking with a uh, 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 Luminar Neo and some some, some global edits and uh, uh, which you call it. But I thought it was uh, I wish we call it um, Lightroom. There we go. And the, the, I think it came out pretty decent overall for that. I love the blue uh, cloud in the middle of the whole thing. I think that kind of is kind of apropos for the whole entire memorial because it gives that kind of that symbolism of the heavens <laughs> opening up for these folks here. So I thought it worked out pretty well for the whole thing. This was shot with a, with a super wide angle. I did have to correct for uh, some of the, yeah, the, 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 the keystoning effect as well. No, oh, thank you. Thanks for the, thank you, Jackie. I appreciate that. So this was also a Kirby store order. So my, 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 I had two, uh, two photos that I wanted to shoot at Kirby store. One was towards the North. I had shot that one before, but I wanted to, to see if I can come up with something different. But I also wanted to shoot one towards the south. When we got there, the clouds were covering up towards the north. So it wasn't so great. So I just basically uh, planned the shot there. Now, everybody was kind of walking around with lights and stuff like that. Again, that's not a big deal. I just was rolling with the flow because I thought it worked really well. I just placed the camera so that way you could see the lights cutting through the rock. And I did a, I, I saw a page from Greg's book. I took a, my, that pan of view wand that, that we were playing around with out. I took that and I, I used the red and the green to kind of play around with it to kind of give it that little otherworldly glow, which I thought was pretty cool. And I can't remember who was walking back there. I think it was Phoenix is walking by with that, with that, with that red flash <laughs> or red flashlight going on by. So I thought that was kind of cool. So again, we're pointing, I'm pointing towards the South. And again, I'm trying to, I was trying to line it up a little bit on there, but uh, it did, I missed that a little bit. So if I did it again, I might try to do a little more symmetrical, but, uh, but you can see over here on the left-hand side, this is where the clouds were starting to pop up. <clears throat> now you can see uh, some of the trails right here, they're kind of broken up. Again, some of it's dealing with clouds, but it does is all so, a little bit, some of the limitations of dealing with the, uh, with the Olympus stuff, because there's sometimes gaps pop up, and sometimes the gaps can, can pretty uh, can be can be pretty spectacular. It all depends, you know. But there's clouds a little bit over here, clouds over there. The reason why you can see this again, because again, each time the the picture records, the clouds move. It just you can see a little bit of the light that pops up around there. You guys can uh, stop me at any time. I'll, I'll just keep talking. <laughs> so, this was the scene north at this point. So again, I took the uh, little pan of view light rod that I had with me. And since everything was green, supposedly in front of me, I just bathed it with green light right there. And I think Glidden has pointed <laughs> out to me at one point the the north, the, the one I did with the star trails, all the stars were green. Because <laughs> I, I like tweaking with the color a little bit. Now this one, I didn't do too much tweaking with the with that. But again, I love how the, the cars always go by, uh, giving this nice little uh, light streak right there. But you can see the clouds were just covering up the uh, Polaris and the North Star. But you got some interesting, I think, in there. It's probably not the one I would initially uh, uh, get too excited about for this area. I still think I prefer this one right there. I like this one, even with all the light streaks and everything else. I, I just something about that to me kind of sings to me. I like how the lines cut through right there, just below the rock. They kind of lead you through the whole thing to make you read that. And then, of course, you got all these bending around the rock right there, which, again, I think worked out really well. Hey, Donna, I never comment about your green uh, stars. There's I always green... comment about your your blue and yellow Milky Ways. <laughs> this is signature colors. Whenever you see a blue and yellow Milky Way, is a Donna uh, photo. Oh, okay. I thought you said something about the green stars because the green stars are back in this one. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> so uh, this particular one, uh, now all these things were what they call live composites. So these were all either about, like this was a total, <clears throat> if you use live composite, it, 
it takes a, a exposure each time and like Lightroom, it just piles them up. Now this one actually did a pretty good job, but again, the, the but when I, the, now after we left Kirby Storter, I, I drove up for about 30 minutes on US 20, uh, US 29. And, uh, and I just decided on a, on a whim just to pull over to the side of the road just to see what the sky looks like. And of course, those bastard clouds had finally cleared away. So I said, screw it. I just turned down uh, uh, Jane Scenic Highway and just found a patch of road that I could pull off to and a little bit of a little uh, watery area right there, which I thought worked out really well. I tried to line up the lines as best as I could to put it right where the, this was at to kind of drag everybody over. This cloud was kind of hanging around there for a bit. So I just decided to go roll with it because let the light pollution, because it was hitting the cloud and bouncing down. I did tweak the light pollution there to give it more of a sunrise or sunset feel. So that kind of worked out. You can still see a little bit of the firefly dude bouncing around there. But the part I like is you can see some of the light, light in there too, which I really like as well too. But the idea of behind this one, this is probably the, the one I thought from that night was probably the most successful. It was one of the shots I wanted to try to get to. And it actually worked out in my favor, which I, again, I thought was pretty cool. And uh, I, you know, and then, like I said, I was very happy with the results when I got to this particular one. Uh, again, I tweaked this a little bit in Aurora HDR to kind of balance it out. I, I don't know using it too much, but I used it on this one because I think it would be a really kind of a little bit of add a little more oomph to it. You can see right here, uh, there's a little bit of a gap on here, but these were this a much longer time. This was 270 composites and with 45 minutes basically of shooting time on this particular one. Each shot was about, uh, I think about 10 seconds, I think. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, 10 seconds each shot was at 2.8 uh, with, uh, with a 12 to four, 12 millimeters on, the, uh, on my Olympus camera there. Now, last week, the weekend after that, I went to Bach Tower. Now, for those of you who went to Bach Tower, this was the, the shot I ended up getting. Uh, I posted it on my blog, the, the shot that, uh, that, that was actually recorded, because if you, uh, right behind us was they turned on the, the stadium at the high school, and it blasted this big, bright light <laughs> onto the uh, Bach Tower, and it caused deep, dark shadows. <laughs> all across there so luckily i had shot some daylight pictures over there so i just basically lined up some daylight shots to kind of even out <laughs> some of the shadowing that was happening there uh but i i'm not sure if i worked out as well I, I got some decent star trails up there i was kind of off center a little bit for polaris right there because i want to be off there to the side so if i probably stepped over a little bit more and maybe stepped forward i probably would have gotten a slightly better shot but uh I was still you know, pleased with the result and I thought it worked out really well for that type of thing. Again, this was a got about a, a 45 minute, 270 live composite shot, 10 seconds each. What about ISO, Donald? Oh, the ISO was uh, 3 million, no, 1600. Okay. Yeah, now this one right here uh, was actually a composite blend and I'll talk more about this in the, uh, in the in the edit portion of this one but just to kind of give you an idea they didn't really have too many lights lit up they had the top light right here lit up uh not too much in here as far as the windows go but they had this ginormous light lit up right there it was just like oh my god and i had to bracket the crap out of it just so i could get down to a tiny teeny light even then i still i had a daylight version of the of the tower of the shot and i just kind of overlapped it but the issue, of course, with anything with this, with the micro four thirds is all the noise that was generating in the shadows. And it took a little bit of time just to clean all that stuff up. If you look real closely, some of the stars are duplicated in this shot too, because of the, of the uh, HDR effect. And I said, screw it. No one's ever going to notice. <laughs> well, I just told you. So you all notice now. So there you go. So this was the shot that inspired me to, to do another Star Trails at the Bach Tower, because this was the shot that I shot before. You could see it was a little bit closer, moving up forward. And right over there, you could see Polaris sticking his little head outside there. This was uh, the, the thing with the park was that there's lots of people wandering around, gave it this nice light pollution right there. I mean, light painting right there. Uh, but this was in January when I did it. Now with the, with the time change, it's a little bit lighter. It doesn't get dark 
quick uh, uh, dark soon enough so we might have to wait to the time change for to try it again if you want if anybody's interested in that type of stuff but january was a good time to go out there that was a couple of years ago like in january uh, 2020 on my notes there any questions about any of that stuff before i, I, I we wrap it up here I didn't see anything there good use of color and composition thanks guys appreciate it love it Oh, Valley Jet, thank you very much. I appreciate that, Nancy. All right. Okay. Now, just kind of give you an idea. You can see there on the very, very bottom of this particular screenshot I did. Uh, what I did was I was took dumped this into, uh, uh, I think this is Photoshop, I believe, that I dumped it into a Lightroom. I can't remember now. But you can see how bright it was over there. And I just basically I had to go down to about almost, I uh, forget how dark it was right there. Because I was trying to get, I was overexposing right there because I wanted to, I wanted to get some of the stars there, but I also wanted to burn the crap out, out of that. And this is pretty much how it came up with is this right here. And you think at first glance, it's not too bad until you start zooming up on that particular area right there. You can see it didn't quite mesh up or get really as close. There's a lot of duplication of some of the things in there. So you can see over here, what I ended up doing was I ended up having to add a few other elements to fix some of these options right there. So I took this picture and that's the daylight photo I used and I lined it up in there to create it. And so what I ended up doing is I just ended up working in layers and I kept dumping it into Luminar Neo and uh, cleaning up here and there, adding a few things and just playing around with the sky, separating the sky, trying to play around with it to get a little bit more accurate color of what I saw out there. And you can see I'm just literally just going to town. Now these edits may not be perfect. They may not be the right way to have done it. Uh, I'm not a perfect person when it comes to Photoshop, but these are just kind of the things I kind of play around with just to see what kind of I can do. I do what's called like a clipping the mask. So that way everything looks on there. And then of course I kind of save it as and throw it into the whole thing. But this is kind of the thing I was kind of playing around with to try to get the shot. And that basically ended up being the shot that I I was fairly pleased with it. I thought it looked fairly close to the way I remembered it. I did artificially generate the light from the daylight here to put that in because I thought it was a nice little piece in the composition. But then, of course, like I said, I played around with, with new, uh, 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 Luminar Neo and I added uh, my Milky Way behind it. <laughs> so, so I did a little creative compositive editing, creative on sky on that one. I thought that came out kind of cool. So I said, I got to show that off. But you can see it still picked up. It's still not quite accurate. It did show some of the stars that I had from over here and there. And you can see right there, the, uh, the sharpening detail went a little bit nuts. But uh, all in all, I think it was a pretty pleasant uh, shot overall. I think it came out pretty cool. Yeah, that came out great. <laughs> so... Uh, Thank you guys very much for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. I hope you guys uh, got some good information that you guys could use. Uh, and if there's anything else I could show you or go over with, I would be more than glad to, uh, to talk with you. I'm, I don't have anywhere to go tonight. I'm all alone. I'm going to have to hit the bar later. I'm just kidding. I probably will hit the bar, but I'm not that lonely, though. Let me see if I can find my Zoom pages now. Let's see where we are. There we are. There we go. Cool. Oh, look, there's still everybody. Yay, everybody's still here. So uh, I don't know if anybody answered your question, Al, but uh, I'll, I'll see. If, I'll check around if anybody finds out some more uh, information about your, about some uh, things out there. And uh, was it uh, Palm Beach, right, Big Al? Was it Palm Beach you said you were at? Yeah, there's a... Um... Uh, someone, uh, there's a Boynton Beach camera club and someone messaged me saying that they were going to shoot in the wildlife area on, I think it's the 27th, I'll have to look at my calendar again. Right. Um, I don't have any more info on that at this time. Um, what I will do, I have a, a JPEG um, that sort of has my, my three shooting scenarios. I'll push that up to the website site to the meetup from sure. the uh yeah so you can get a, get your hands on that i keep that on my phone and that's more or less my cheat sheet to figure out you know, where i am with, <laughs> with my camera because right. i was looking for equivalent equivalent setups 
Okay. Cool. All right, cool. All right. Um, so cool. Well, again, I can't thank you guys enough. The locks to have to the 29th. Yeah. 29th. Cool. It's on a Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, thanks ever again for sharing uh, all these links that are in the chat. Those will be saved and I'll be able to add them when I post them to when I send out the email about the, when I post the, this, when it gets all boiled down to the YouTube thing, uh, then I'll, uh, I'll put that out there uh, with all the links as well, too. So that way it should be out there for everyone to share as far as that goes. Um, I can't thank you all enough for taking the time to spend the time with me tonight. I know, uh, you know, uh, I, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, seven o'clock is just the time that was picked by somebody else in the group. Uh, if seven o'clock still works for you guys, we can always keep it at seven o'clock because uh, somebody said because it works well with dinner time <laughs> for some of you guys out there, which again is fine with me. Um, when, like I said, I'm going to head. Uh, so I'll be, we'll be doing this again. The, the, the group's going to meet again for those who don't know. I do this on the odd months on here. I do another uh, uh, meetup group called the Brainton Photo Group uh, on even days for that. And that's more of a, uh, a self-assignment type of thing where you go out and try, hopefully, the theme that's suggested, but you don't have to, especially if you got something you want to share and talk about and, or get some critical or critique review and stuff of that nature. Um, so yeah, let's see. Let's see, I think that's what it is. Uh, thanks for the, the depth of info and sharing. Oh, you're, you're quite welcome, Phoenix. Like I said, you know, I am not an expert in any shape, way, or form. I just know enough to make me dangerous out there in the world. You can know? always come our way, you know, to shoot. We, yeah. we do a bunch of stuff that it will be, it will be halfway between us and, and where you're located, especially when we go to Wild Island and stuff like that. You, you know, it, we're equidistant. To, for you and us, so. Will you be making those part of a group activity, Lynn? Pardon me, what was that, Julie? Will, will those be part of the, the group? Will you be posting Oh yeah, yeah, we, we always post it. So everybody yeah. who wants to join can join. Yeah. The, the problem is uh, sometimes Donna and I will do impromptu things and those are a little bit more difficult to, yeah. to coordinate, but yeah. All at least all the outings I come up uh, for the group, we will publish them for for a long, long time so everybody can make arrangements. But yeah, um, like I said, Wild Island again is is a lot of fun uh, in the sense that you just park there and you're you know you, you're shooting almost from your car. Uh, the only problem is that you know the early season now of the Milky Way you got to be out there at 3 a.m. Yeah. That's the only thing. So, so for us, for Don and I, we, we usually try to stay uh, in Sebring. So it, it's closer and we're not driving at 5 a.m., you know, back to the, to the West Coast. Um, for Kirby Storter Park, um, I think it will be closer for those of you that live, you know, Southeast uh, Florida. Um, <laughs> Again, we stay in Naples, or at least I stay in Naples, um, or you can say in Everglades City. Um, then the other ones that we usually do, they're up north. And for those of you that are not from this area, it, it will have to be planned ahead of time because uh, accommodations are somewhat limited up north. I, I mean, when I say up north, I'm talking... Um, above Ocala, but below the, the panhandle, that corner of the state. Um, and basically accommodations are somewhat limited, but the skies are pitch dark. So it, it is fantastic. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, we, uh, I know Glidden's got, and some of the group has gotten some great pictures. Oh, Dave McDonald got some great shots. You've gotten some great shots out there. My shots have, have been kind of so, so, so far. I'm still kind of, you know, happy with myself. Ah, right? come on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but uh, you know, uh, yeah, there's a lot of great stuff that we could try to do again this year. I still want to try to see if we can try to do some sort of out of state group activity. Somebody, uh, uh, I know, um, I mean, I I've only, I, I, the only time I've been out west of the Mississippi was back, I think it was it in um, 2019, 
2017, 18, something like that. When I went to go shoot my, my cousin's wedding and I went west of the Mississippi and I stayed in Nebraska and I just, I, that's where I really saw truly dark skies, not, not ringed by a bunch of light fire or light pollution fire around the whole entire place. So that was really cool. And I'm looking forward. I'm jealous of anybody who's going to go to death Valley who gets, who gets to take advantage of that because I, 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 that's one of my uh, bucket list shots to go do, but I can't do that this year. I've already booked my vacation. I'm going to go spend time with my kid who was just turning 18 in May. So I got I to gotta take advantage of the rug rat while he's still a rug rat. <laughs> <laughs> After that, it's going to be like, hey, dad, I, I'm a little busy right now. I'm going to go do something else right now. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I, it, it's like that karmic reciprocity coming back to bite me from when I did it to, all my, when I did it to my parents. So, yeah, there you go. I think there was, there was a song about that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it plays in my head constantly, the older he gets. <laughs> But uh, again, I want to thank everybody who uh, showed up. And uh, again, I really appreciate you taking the time. I went a little bit over tonight than I was expecting, but I, I appreciate you guys sticking around. I hope you guys got some great info. Uh, but please, please all mean if you can do anything to help support what we do, by all means, share the group, share my website. You know, if you want to drop a tip or two in the bucket for me, that's be awesome. Uh, I, you know, you don't have to, it's never a priority. This is just stuff that helps keep me going so I can keep doing stuff like this. The store helps me out, you know, as far as letting me use the Zoom. They take care of that. They also take care of a few other things like I could do this at the store, that type of stuff. And I get to talk about things at the store. Since I work at a camera store, it's always good to talk about toys. Toys are always fun to talk about. So if anybody wants to do any kind of equipment type of thing, I'll be glad to set something up with that and maybe get one of the guys, the reps to talk about it with the group. We've had that before and I can always try to swing it again. That's a lot of fun. I've had the Sony rep talk one time. I had Olympus rep talk one time. So again, we could always try to do something different. I'm trying to get Derek to, after he gets caught up with the Z, he's from the Nikon guy. I'm trying to convince him to do an online session with us, with the Z9. But the, I have to wait till the hubbub dies. So who knows when that's going to be with that? So we'll see how that goes. But Actually, yeah. Yes, sir. actually, no, no, for, for the group, this is a group member that is not here today, Jennifer Lyles Clemens. Right. She posted a fantastic picture of the moonset over the pier in, in clear water. I saw that, that this morning. Awesome. Absolutely yeah. gorgeous with yeah, that... the moon, a uh, red moon, and so on. It's fantastic. I think I saw that on Instagram. I don't know if she posted it to the, uh, to the, uh, I saw it on Facebook. But not, uh, it's not in the group, but it's a fantastic, fantastic picture. I have been tempted to get up early tomorrow and, and drive over there and try to shoot it. Yeah. Yeah. She's another member of the group. If you guys get a chance, she does some fantastic work. You can always can follow along with her too, as well. Has anyone been to Stephen Park in Georgia, uh, Forster, Foster Park? No, I have not been there. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has. Anything else, guys? Thank you. Well, thank you guys very much. All right. Well, listen, um, yeah, there's a couple of a Jekyll Island. Yeah, that's a good idea. I forgot about Jekyll Island. Yep, been there. <laughs> I like that. Been there, done that. You go to Jekyll Island, there's Horton House, and you can shoot Horton House to the south. Right. And the light in on that. I'll send the photo for next, next time you have a meeting. Sure. That'd be awesome. Okay. All right. Cool, guys. Well, thank you all so much. All I can say is uh, have fun, be safe, and take lots of pretty pictures out there. Hope you guys have a great evening. You know, hug and kiss your loved ones. And uh, if you don't have any loved ones, just hug and kiss yourself a few times. Just don't take any pictures of that. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Have a great day, guys. And, uh, All right.